Hi there, this is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Uh, today's video on the question of, is it dangerous to stop drinking cold turkey? Now, this, this is a multi-layered question, really, because there are various things going on behind this seemingly simple statement. And whenever I make a video about stopping drinking, or if I write a blog post, uh, I, get, I, I sometimes get a bit of abuse. You know, someone will take issue with the post and they will put, generally it goes like this. Uh, this is outrageous. Uh, how can you be suggesting that people just stop drinking? This is very dangerous. Don't you know that alcohol withdrawal can kill people? And they get very, very high and mighty about it and go, whoa, you know, how dare you suggest that people stop drinking? And <sighs> it, it, it takes some explaining because they're right in a very kind of specific way they're right. In a very, in the very way that doesn't apply to the vast majority of people that find my videos that end up at my website. Because you see, we have a little bit of a problem with the image of what someone who's addicted to alcohol looks like. TV and Hollywood depicts an alcoholic as this disheveled, guy, you know, sitting on a park bench swigging cheap brandy from a brown paper bag. A guy who gets up in the morning, the first thing he does is reach for the whiskey bottle. A guy who can't hold down a job, who can't drive because he's got so many DUIs. This is the stereotypical alcoholic. And those sorts of people exist, but they are thankfully the minority. And those people don't come to my website, mainly because they're not functioning enough as a human being to do something like that. You know, to, to research and end up at a website and look for help. They're, you know, alcohol has to totally dominated their life. It's taken over everything. They don't care about anything anymore. They're just drinking. You know, get up in the morning and they drink. And they, they can't go more than a couple of hours without drinking. These people are completely devastated by alcohol. And they are way beyond the sort of help that I offer. You know, if they came to me and described their situation, I would tell them to go somewhere else because I can't help people like this. These sorts of alcoholics need immediate inpatient medical intervention in a rehab center, in a hospital, because anything else is dangerous. Now, so when people get very upset with my, my blog posts and say, ah, oh, outrageous, you suggest this, you could kill people, you idiot, these other people they're talking about who are at risk. But the alcohol manufacturers and problem drinkers propagate the myth that cold turkey is dangerous for everybody. And drinkers spread this myth because it gives them a license to carry on drinking. Yeah, well, I can't stop, it would kill me. I better carry on. And the alcohol industry propagates this myth for obvious reasons. You know, it doesn't want people to stop drinking. And it wants to scare them. Uh, and here's an interesting, you know, this is much more devious than you ever imagined. You know, the alcohol companies are not stupid. They act as malintentionedly and as deviously as the cigarette companies do. They're pushing a drug. They are drug dealers. Don't let the glossy advertising and the marketing fool you. These companies do not care about your health because they fund, promote and endorse lots of research and propaganda and press releases that back up what the message they want to send out. You've probably heard the message, red wine is good for your heart. You should drink red wine, it's good for your heart. Where do you think that research comes from? I saw a report on Facebook two days ago. A bottle of wine a day is no longer considered unhealthy. New report states. What new report? Where has this come from? You know, this, that is an example of the alcohol industry looking at a problem. People are worried because they're drinking a bottle of wine a day. Quick, employ a writer, get them to release an independent press release stating that a bottle of wine a day is normal. Oh good, I can carry on. But when they talk about going cold turkey being fatal, they understand that this makes people who are addicted to alcohol feel stressed, makes them feel anxious. Now what do people who are addicted to alcohol do when they feel stressed? That's right, they drink. So this is, not a, this is not a coincidence. This myth has a very powerful purpose. Now, most people, the vast majority of people come to my website, they are entirely functioning 
intelligent, successful people. They are bringing up children in a healthy home environment. The kids are healthy, they're going to school, they're getting good grades, everything is fine. They're holding down a job. They are not missing work because of their drinking. They don't have DUIs generally, and they are functioning. They are getting on with their life. And to people outside their close-knit family, they appear normal. These are the people that come to my website because they're drinking, they're not getting up in the morning and you know hitting the whiskey bottle, but they probably are drinking between one and two bottles of wine a night. Now, you sustain that sort of drinking over years, decades, and you start to see some devastating consequences. Your health dramatically deteriorates. Your finances get squeezed. You can't pay the bills. Your career stalls and even stumbles. You don't get the promotion. You start having to work harder to earn the same money. Things start sliding backwards because you just aren't operating at your peak uh, capacity. Your marriage starts to fall apart. Your relationships fail. The, the, your kids start you know, coming off the rails and things like that. Your whole world starts falling in on itself because of this addiction. And the people who come to my website are waking up every morning full of guilt, full of regret, desperately unhappy, miserable because they can't control their drinking and terrified because they know they're going to do it again later that day. You know, they're dragging themselves into work. They feel terrible, but they're doing their job. They're getting away with it, but they're miserable. Now, for these people, you stop drinking and the withdrawal sensations you're going to get are largely insignificant. You're going to feel, feel a sensation of mild anxiety. You're going to feel a little bit jittery, like, oh, something's missing, something's missing. Oh, I just feel a bit oh, stressed. That's what you're going to feel like. Maybe you're going to have some sleepless nights because you're used to taking an anesthetic to get to sleep. Now you have to remember how you go to sleep without an anesthetic. So those are the general withdrawal sensations that most people experience. And look, you can cope with this. You can co you've coped with much more than that in your life. When you had flu the last time, you had more than that. You're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. You're going to sleep poorly initially. As long as you know why it's happening, you can do this. You can deal with it. Now, that chemical effect of the withdrawal is going to last two to three weeks. It's going to reach its climax about 24 to 36 hours after you stop drinking. So, you know, from that point, it's just going to keep getting easier and easier and easier. And then once you get two weeks out, you're purely in the realms of psychological addiction. There's no chemical effect from the drug left. So, stop using giving up alcohol is dangerous as an excuse because it isn't. In the very worst case scenario, if you get some physical symptoms of alcohol withdrawal, I'm talking about trembling, uh, vomiting, that sort of thing, then you go straight to your GP and you ask for something to help with the withdrawal symptoms. It's not an excuse to carry on drinking because your GP can give you some medication to take the edge off and make it more bearable. And then you go back to the process and you do it again. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching. If you have comments and suggestions, please post them below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can do via the website www.stopdrinkingexpert.com. My name's Craig Beck. Thank you for watching.